Therefore, the topic of this is the construct aware stage of ego development and its relationship to the fine art of Fu Ling. <laughs> In this brief talk, I will advocate the fine art of Fu Ling, the use of laughter as a tool to lighten up our own lives and the world around us. While fools can be at any stage, it is a late stage discovery to recognize the poison of taking ourselves too seriously. And its antidote light-heartedness and delight. Let's face it, we integralists take ourselves and our mandate to raise collective consciousness very seriously. As allies of evolution, we have much important knowledge to share. And while that is as it should be, I'm here to remind us of the fool in all of us. This talk is meant as an introduction to the practices that Doshin and Angela and I will facilitate in practicing Fu Ling. In the workshop that follows, we will laugh at ourselves and applaud not knowing and childlike play. Ego development theory proposes that it is a characteristic of maturity to discover that not knowing is the highest form of knowing. Fooling is about recognizing the folly of trying to explain and map everything. Some of us may bristle at the notion of being a fool, especially if we cherish our identity as integral. But Shakespeare already said in Twelfth Nights, his fool, Foolery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun, it shines everywhere. And we quip, anyone who does not wish to see a fool should smash his mirror. <laughs> you see, you and I are in the best of company here. We are all fools when we so avidly strive to gain greater insight, to master our lives, to reach nirvana and hope to leave traces of our greatness. As a group, we tend to believe that if only everyone else could collaborate and see the world through our color-tinted glasses, then we could be saved and create a better world. I propose that there is a relationship between the late stage capacity to see through the function of the ego and the archetype of the fool. Both show an increasing affinity for mirth and laughter. Both tend to point to the shadow side of all that is pretentious and takes itself too seriously. All cultures Groups and individuals tell stories about where they come from and who they are in relation to nature and the universe. They have explanations about why they exist and where they are headed in this life and after death. From myth to grand theories of everything, storytelling seems to be a universal human characteristic. The construct of air stage in ego development theory is the first in which some people begin to explore the astounding need to explain everything under the sun and the related capacity to fool ourselves about what it means to know. They potentially realize the illusion of knowing and the futility of trying to make ever better maps of reality. What is ego? As I define it in ego development theory, ego underlies the universal drive to explain. It represents the striving of human beings to understand themselves 
and the world they live in. Ego is the tireless organizer, interpreter and synthesizer of experience. Its task is to turn experience into a coherent narrative about the world and make us thereby feel safe, important and to belong. How does it do that? It does so by telling a culturally influenced story about who we are, why we are here, and for what purpose. Overall, the ego labors mightily to create and ma maintain meaning and vigorously defends against dissonant information. Indeed, when we are not able to tell a good story about ourselves, our past and our future, we feel lost and anxious. Ego is all about denying our mortality. Therefore, facing and embracing this is part of late-stage realization. Based on the evidence of hundreds of thousands of sentence completions, we identified nine different self-stories which represent increasing levels of individuation and maturity. Overall, human development, as I describe it, moves from the newborn's unconscious union with mother to a conscious union with everyone and everything. As we grow up, we construct meaning by learning the vocabulary and the scripts available to us from our languages and our cultures. Languages divide the seamless experience into separate objects with distinct boundaries and evaluative attributes. We are so totally immersed in a sea of symbols that we hardly notice the way it lures us into the dream of knowledge. The idea of a separate self in Western cultures is just one result of this phenomenon. It is ironic that concepts such as purpose and soul, as well as ego, are symbolic abstractions that do not exist outside of language and our agreed upon definitions. Yet we treat them almost always as if they were palpable real things. This talk is about the construct aware stage. Can we have the slide? I had two slides that uh, I was hoping to. The stage has several expressions. The cognitive focused construct aware and the more meaning-focused ego-aware. A third, more action-oriented form pertains to folks who bravely hold up the mirror to society and intervene in real time to debunk all forms of accepted dogma, nonsense, and pretense. These folks are co closest to the fool archetype. And what they all have in common is that the ego is still in charge and trying to remain in charge. The job of wise fools and chesters has always been to expose the blind spots of society and to unmask individual foolishness. Both wise humans and chesters realize that there is nothing to gain or to lose. We're just here, now alive, on this tiny blue bubble hurtling through a vast, mysterious universe. It is late-stage discovery that lived experience is dynamic and seamless, comprised of myriad of sensory impression, states, feelings and thoughts. The maps of reality we construct with words can never depict the undivided whole, the actual lived territory. And yet we believe that we capture reality 
when we concoct plausible explanations about it. A brief refresher of ego development theory based on this image. The first half of the arc image shows the movement from the unconscious unity of the infant at birth to an ever more accurate, unique and separate self-identity at stage four. At the apex of the arc, the boundary between me and not me, between this and that, is most clearly articulated. Stage four represents the ideal adult in modern Western society. It is analytical. It trusts that humans can figure out solutions to all problems, if not now, in the future. However, people at stage four do not yet fully recognize their historical, geographic, cultural and linguistic conditioning. The discovering of having been socialized into specific beliefs what is about what is real is an aspect of the next, of the four or five stage. Individuals are now aware that other people have their own perspectives and unique programming to deal with on their own way of telling their stories. Rational linear analysis is often rejected in favor of free-spirited self-expression. One realizes that life and the world is stranger and less predictable than one believed up to now. Great uncertainty to one really is outside of social conditioning is part of the confusion and the challenge of stage four or five. At the same time, Self-questioning allows for a sense of curiosity, of freedom, and the open road. At stage five, teal, if you need a other label, people gain a more integrated way to feel good, powerful, and certain about themselves. Rational analysis is an important part of meaning making, yet it is supported by access to intuition, dreams, creativity, and other resources. Individuals now fully realize the interdependence of people and systems. Many also feel empowered, masterful, and proud of their understanding as they indeed know a lot more about themselves and the world than people at any earlier stage. Pride. How much one understands is one of the shadows of this level, along with its inner certainty and sense of importance. The construct aware stage five sick is the first in the sequence to begin to understand the process of meaning making itself and of self identity formation. While stage five does recognize the pattern of vertical development, it still trusts that more knowledge and control over the vagaries of life are attainable and will give us a way out of the current global calamity. Stage five say, constitutes a radically new perspective. It can look at the whole paradigm of constructive developmental theory and see both its gifts and its limitations. It embraces the fundamental uncertainty about knowing, and it shows an increasing capacity to see through our human yearning for meaning and wholeness. People at this stage often experience profound existential crises, as there is now really no ground to stand on. It's not just relative. All theories are seen for what they are. Egos attempts to create order, certainty and predictability. Well, there can be tremendous suffering associated with seeing through the games of our egos play. The pain can be appreciated now, indeed embraced as a portal to deeper compassion 
and fuller being. Some individuals at stage five, six focus more on ego's function and how it does its work. Ego aware is the name we have used for this aspect of construct awareness. Ego is always trying to make us feel secure and important. It executes its mandate with exquisite finesse. This includes a tendency to adopt any ideology that resonates with our own ideals and yearnings, gives us a sense of power and belonging, and promises us a sense of immortality. Ego tries to usurp even the loftiest spiritual notions to feel good about itself. Trungpa Rinpoche famously diagnosed this tendency as spiritual materialism. It is easy to observe how quickly the ego will appropriate any content to inflate itself. The suffering here can be intense as no conscious effort at overcoming ego's workings will achieve the goal of ego liberation. The more one seeks detachment, the more attached one is to whatever one is seeking. It is a construct aware capacity to see through ego's efforts at safeguarding our illusion of knowing. Immersed as we are in language, humans everywhere participate in confusing discursive knowing with understanding. And the Buddhists actually say, understanding is the ultimate illusion. <laughs> it takes courage to acknowledge that we are all prone to fool ourselves about our achievements in both developmental and spiritual terms. As I like to say, we are all bozos on the same bus. <laughs> Once we get this joke, we can become more lighthearted and see ego striving for control in a more benevolent light. Fooling us is ego's job. It can never do other. It creates for us a pretend world in which we can reach heaven and in which we don't really have to die. To summarize, mature integration as a human being entails an increasing capacity to notice ego's unflagging efforts at explaining and remaining in charge. I hope this talk has opened the possibility that all of us are fools, prone to fall in the typical and very human trap of self-delusion. We can learn to take ourselves less seriously and laugh at ego's folly while appreciating its hapless and important task. I suggest that the ability to laugh wholeheartedly at the human condition is a mark of ego's maturity and of wise fools. Fooling is the practice to strengthen this awareness. Much has been written about the ubiquity and ancient recognition of the function of the fool as an archetype. He or she is the forerunner of the hero's quest to explore the unknown and deal with the demons awaiting us. Its closest ally is the wise fool, the kind we may encounter in seasoned elders and well-grounded late-stage meaning makers. Fools, like people at stage five, six, are marginal to society. As outsiders, they can observe the human drama while accepting they are part of it. They look at the human condition from a radically honest and yet often deeply caring and imaginative perspective. What do mature construct aware meaning makers and wise fools have in common? Historically and culturally, fools have played an essential role in holding up the mirror to power, vanity and entitlement. 
They laugh at all that is pretentious, inauthentic, exaggerated and unpoetic. They unmask intellectual arrogance, expose rigidity and dismantle ego inflation. They expose and poke fun at sacred cows and pompous behavior of any kind. They shake people out of conventional patterns of thought and behavior and remind us of our humanity. While they challenge the conventional mores and beliefs of society, unlike rebels, they generally do not try to overthrow them. They are joyful, imaginative, and can play with abandoned, like very young, innocent children. They turn the world in its head by making people see the ultimate insignificance of many of the things they hold dear by pointing out unwarranted beliefs and misconceptions. At the same time, wise fools are also laughing at their own ignorance, confusion and yearnings. They form everything that is uncertain in the universe, the random and unknown factors of our existence. They can make them as, that can make them a threat to those who want to believe that all has been mapped out already and settled for good. Getting over ourselves is likely one of the biggest challenges we allies of evolution can face. We are not all that different than the rest of humanity. We all benefit from practicing being okay with what is, especially with making mistakes and making fools of ourselves. Let's unlearn thinking we know and wishing things to be different than they are. Humor and laughter are wonderful remedies for pointing to folly and self-importance wherever they show up. Let's learn to smile kindly at our foibles and clay feet. The very laughter gives us angel wings, a powerful antidote to taking ourselves too seriously. I hope you are now ready for our group practice of Fu Ling the wise art of laughter, play, and delight. Step right up. No, not you. My... <laughs>